What's going on guys? This is No Filter and Nintendo Podcast and here are my 5 most anticipated 2019 Nintendo first party games. Kind of a mouthful, but <laughs> let's just jump into it here. This 2019 has been kind of slow a little bit. A few good games here, a lot of great indie games however, but the second half of 2019 is absolutely bonkers with games. We already have Super Mario Maker 2. We have a whole bunch of other games coming up soon, and uh, I'm sure we're going to get a direct in maybe August, I'm thinking, maybe before Astral Chain, or maybe in September after Astral Chain has been released, uh, that they're going to talk about maybe another uh, Nintendo first party game that'll come in for the uh, December time frame. But these are the five games as of now, as of July 2019, are my most anticipated games from Nintendo first party. Number five is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah, I am a really big Fire Emblem fan. However, I absolutely adored Awakening. I played Birthright and I loved it. I played Conquest, did not go all the way through it. And I also did buy, I believe it's called Revelations. And uh, I did not even play that game yet because I didn't beat Conquest. I feel like I got a little bit of that Fire Emblem fatigue. However, I am 100% in for Fire Emblem Three Houses. I don't know if I should be, I don't know if I'm making a mistake here, however, I'm really excited. I love the idea of being a teacher in this kind of world. I love the idea of this monastery with like the three different factions of friends that you would have made at the start of the game and then, you know, zoom in later on in the future to where there's a war breaking out and they're all on different sides. I think that is such a cool idea and I see a lot of the improvements they make here looks a lot nicer. I like a lot of the aspects that they have outside of the combat as well here. Um, It doesn't seem like it's so much just straight up like waifu kind of marriage kind of crap. Which honestly was a lot of fun, but you know I don't want to talk too much down on that. But yeah, just everything they've been showing me of Fire Emblem Three Houses is really, really looking good to me. And I think it's going to be slept on. I feel like people have been sleeping on it, at least I'll say. I think it's still going to do bonkers. It's going to do really well. The best, I'm going to I'm going to guess that it's the best-selling Fire Emblem game, except maybe to Awakening. We'll have to see, but I think with the Switch and its momentum... I'm thinking we can see, you know, upwards of 3 million units for this game. Uh, Maybe even more. We'll see. But uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely a game that uh, I think everyone should keep an eye out on and I'm really excited for. So that is my number five. Number four is Demon X Machina. Yes, this is above Fire Emblem. The only reason I kind of did that, I think, is because Fire Emblem is coming out so soon and we've seen a lot of that, uh, especially with it coming so soon and they've had all these recent trailers. But Demon X Machina, again, is another one that I think so many people are sleeping on, and I honestly don't understand why. I feel like people are just kind of making the excuse in their head because they know that they're not the biggest, you know, big robot fighting fan. And they played the demo, they know it's like, oh, that doesn't feel too great, and then all of a sudden they just write it right off. They, it's, it's unfortunate, because even in the demo, you could, in, you could upgrade your... Uh, your mech in order for it to move faster and move smoother and stuff like that it was an improvement that you can make throughout the game that wasn't just going to happen at the start of the game so it's unfortunate that i see a lot of people kind of neglecting it right away however everything i've seen they had that recent trailer showing all the improvements they made on it i think this game looks so good i absolutely adore the art style i'm even thinking of getting the big collector's edition and again i'm personally i'm not a huge you know big robot type fan you know like one of my the only animes i've seen with big robots is knights of sidonia on netflix and which i did like by the way but yeah something about this game and the visual art style the kind of the story how it's kind of built up i think it's going to be really good and i'm really excited for it so yeah this is definitely worthy of my number four spot for 2019 Number three, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, um, I am so annoyed with Pokemon Company and Game Freak with how little ambition they have and how much, uh, again, people want to defend them in this way, but no, they are a billion dollar company with a billion dollar brand and they can't put in the effort that you see small indie companies do for their games. I just don't see it. They just don't want to put money into it. They just want to see all profit. They don't want to see anything else. Like, I don't get it. I want to see a fantastic game. I don't want to see a game that has to be hindering itself in order for you to release Pokemon cards with it. 
I want to see a fantastic game and they are not putting in their all. I don't care what anyone's trying to say about this. It is plain as day. It could be so much better than what it is. However, (laughs) I do enjoy my Pokemon games and this is a big step for the Pokemon core RPG series. I'm excited. You know, I want to see what it's like. I want to see what it's, you know, I want to play it. I want to see this whole wilds world that I guarantee is going to be disappointing, but Again, it is a Pokemon game, man. Like, you know, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a fun time. You know, I still have the dream. I still have the hope that we're going to see a Pokemon game where it's like we're in like a real world where like it's actually a well-made designed world and all this stuff. And, you know, everything feels like you're actually living in the Pokemon world. But we'll see. Uh, It's not happening here. However, again, I do think this is going to be a fun game. I will enjoy it. I'm just a little disappointed that it's not more than what it is. But yeah. I know I put that as number three and I seem super down on it, but again, it is a Pokemon game and I'm really excited for it. Uh, Number two, it's between these two games here. These were really close for me. Luigi's Mansion 3 is my number two. (laughs) Um, I absolutely love Dark Moon. I don't understand. I have played the first one. I played it on GameCube when it first was out. I traded that in like a week later because I finished it, I think in one sitting. It was a fun game. I really enjoyed it. I loved the creepy aspect. I loved that. When Dark Moon was announced for 3DS, I thought, oh my god, this game in 3D is going to be amazing. And yes, it was. The game looks gorgeous on the 3DS screen. In 3D, it popped. It was so good. And uh, I loved the zaniness and the multiple levels and how unique everything looked in the game. It wasn't like the first one where everything looked honestly kind of similar except for the portrait ghosts. But yeah, this, uh, yeah, Luigi's Mansion 3, guys. Um... I think Next Level Games is highly underrated as far as Nintendo companies go. I think Nintendo understands how talented they are. They gave them Metroid. They gave them Luigi's Mansion, Mario. They've seen all of these things, and honestly, they've done fantastic games every time. They have not made a bad game yet. Quote me on that. They have not made a bad game yet, and I guarantee they're not stopping here. That E3 trailer of this looked so good. Um... And uh, the only the only wish I had here is that it would have been in 3D if Switch was 3D because uh, I think if anything that would make the the world uh, the levels pop even more. But yeah, no, this game looks really good just visually, gameplay wise. The slam mechanic looks really cool. Um, I really do enjoy that. Um, and yeah, I just can't wait to get going on this game. Plus, hey, coming out October 31st. I do think that's a little weird. I feel like they should release it like maybe a week before. I don't know why right on the 31st, because it's like the whole spooky holiday season for Halloween is like, you know, the weeks before, not as of the 31st right on, but hey, we'll see. And the final game, which I'm wondering if a lot of you guys are going to guess or not, but uh, this is definitely, this has been my number one since it was first shown off, and uh, it is Astral Motherfucking Chain, people. (laughs) Sorry for the swear. But uh, yeah, Astral Chain. Um, Yeah, Platinum Games. Uh, creator of Near Aut- uh, Automata and Hideki Kamiya, Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, Okami. Yeah, I mean, the pedigree behind this game is obviously amazing. Again, the director, I believe, of Near Automata is the uh, the is the director of this, or maybe he was the head writer or something like of that of for Nier. I kind of forget what he was now, but he's the spearhead for this game, the guy who, one of the head guys of uh, Nier Automated's development. So uh, that game's fantastic. Bayonetta is fantastic. Everything Platinum Games does, at least with their core actual team, that isn't just taking on the, you know, using their C team to do the Transformers games and stuff for money. This game is a labor of love. It's through Nintendo. It's going to be fantastic. But yeah, those are my top five games from Nintendo First Party coming out in 2019. Uh, Again, I do feel like there's going to be more coming. Uh, Heck, I could be forgetting some right now. Um, I'm not even talking about third party games. I'm definitely not talking about indie games. I got to make a video about that, probably like a top 20. But uh, yeah, I want to know what you guys think, though. What are your favorite games? I want to know the order, you know. Don't give me just a list of games you want it, you're looking forward to. I want to see the top three from you guys. What is your number one game this year? I know I'm missing some, like, maybe Zelda Link's Awakening, but honestly, I think I might be skipping out on that game. I played it on the the DX version on 3DS not too long ago, uh, maybe a year or two ago. So I, I don't have the, you know, the big push to go play this one right away. I think this is one's a, a wait for sale, but... 
yeah, let me know what you guys think. I, I know there's a few other games, Ultimate Alliance, and a whole bunch of other ones that are out there. I want to hear what you guys think. I want to see the differing opinions. I want to see what your top games are. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time. So there it is, guys. That is a sneak peek on one of the videos that I'm going to have up. So if you're watching this podcast through to the end, you're going to be getting a sneak peek of some videos that come out later on. However, um, I do want to kind of stop here and just say thank you guys, you know, everyone who watches and comments and has any kind of, you know, follows me on Twitter and just kind of joins in on, uh, you know, in No Filter and Nintendo Podcast. You know, it's kind of a labor of love for me. Um, I love indie games so obviously you guys see that i play a lot of indie games here and i uh you know i just want to thank you guys for uh watching and uh, enjoying the content and you know being uh involved in any way that you uh that you have been again either through twitter subscribing on the youtube channel anything like that so just want to say thanks for all that and uh, i will be doing some special uh little bits here in the podcast going forward but again thank you guys for watching it's been no filter and nintendo podcast and i will see you all next time bye